Right, so we're going to look at uh, quantum robust methods. Uh, so in this case, we'll look at WOTS and we'll see how we can create a message which is signed, which is also quantum robust. So the main methods that are used for quantum robustness. So the problem are these. The problem that we have is that uh, methods such as RSA and elliptic curve uh, will be cracked with uh, qu quantum computers. So we need to move away from those types of methods uh, and move towards these ones. So the four main contenders are lattice-based cryptography and that's using methods such as full homomorphic encryption and code obfuscation. We have code-based uh, cryptography which are more focused on the linear codes that we use in data communications and most um, uh, vector multiplication. We have multivariate polynomial uh, cryptography and finally we have hash based signatures. Okay so I have examples of each of these types but in this presentation I'll, I'll concentrate on hash based signatures. How we can use our traditional hash based me methods and make them quantum robust. Okay, so this is what we do when we sign data. Uh, we take, we generate a public and a private key. And Alice, in this case, wants to prove her identity. So what she does is she takes some data, such as the message that she's sending to Bob. She then encrypts that with her, uh, with her private key. Or takes the hash of the message and encrypts that with her private key. She sends that over with her uh, as signed data, as the signed message. Bob will then check the signature uh, that has been signed by Alice and also that the data is valid with Alice's public key. So as I said, RSA and elliptic carve are the typical methods that we use just now for this type of uh, signing process but those aren't quantum robust. So we need to look at new methods. So let's look at WOTS. And what we do with this is that we generate 32 random numbers, 32 256-bit random numbers. What we then do is for each of these random numbers, we hash 256 times. So we hash, 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 hash again using the SHA-256 method. Okay, so we're using SHA-256 and we hash, we go around and keep hashing 256 times. So that then gives us, as an output, a 256-bit value. And we do that for each of the values that we have from our, our uh, first value, that's our private key, private key 0, to our 32nd value, our private key 31. So in this case, our private key is the 32 256-bit random numbers. We don't release these. These are our private keys. So as I said, each of them uh, is hashed 256 times using SHA-256. We then end up with our public keys, which are 32 256-bit values. Each of those values uh, is the private key hashed 256 times. With our hashing methods, such as SHA-256, it is not possible to determine what the original value was based on the value that, that we have as a result. So when we're encrypting, when we're signing our message, we take the message and we take a thumbprint of a signature of it, SHA-256. We then end up with 32 8-bit values, N1 to N32. So now well, what we want to do is to be able to sign that with our uh, private key. So what we do is we take the, our, each of our private keys, okay, for each of the positions, and we hash 256-bit let's take away the value of the 8-bit value. So if the value was 10, we will hash it 246 times. So we go around 246 times 
uh, with this value here and we end up with the, uh, the first part of the signature. We then go through each one, each 8-bit value and look at the values and then we will hash the given the position, the, priv the private key value for that position and then 256 minus the number of times around the loop is 256 minus that value. So if it was 20 for the second uh, byte, then we would hash 236 times. So that's a 256-bit hash, because we're using SHA-256 then. Okay, so we will end up with 32 of these 256-bit uh, values for our signature. We then, when the other side wants to prove, and we'll just expand here, when the other side wants to prove the value, they will take the, the message that they receive, they will then put it through a SHA-256, and they will end up with the same N1, N2, N3, N4, and so on. So they check each of the bytes, the 32 bytes within the SHA-256 signature, and they will hash it for the number of times of the value. So in this case, they'll take the signature and then hash it N1 times. And because it's 256 bits minus N1 is the times it's already been hashed, when, when the receiver hashes uh, by N1 times, so if that was 10, they will then hash 10 times. And they will end up with the hashed value of the private key, or the private key value for 0, hashed by 256 times. And that gives us what our public key is. And this is our public key here. Okay, so I'll just talk you through that. So when we're signing it, if the value of N1 is 10, we will hash that value to produce a signature for that byte 246 times. That becomes the signature of that byte. On the receiver, when the receiver wants to check that signature, they will then take the value, which is 10, they will know it's 10, they take, sorry, they take uh, the message and then hash it, they take that byte at position N1, if that's 10, they will then hash the value 10 times using SHA-256. The result should be the same as a public key. Okay, so it's not possible to be able to find out what the, what the original uh, private key was uh, from, from that. And that's the way that it works, and it is seen to be quantum robust at the current time. Okay, so that's the WOTS method. Thanks.